Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is going to be about how to approach starting to prepare for the RHCSA exam, which was actually inspired by some viewer questions on some of my other RHCSA videos. Before I dive in, I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video and also want to invite everyone, if you have not subscribed yet, to make sure you click that subscribe button. If you enjoy the contents of this video, make sure that you click like and also feel free to share with anyone that you think would find the content useful. So without further ado, let's jump into some viewer feedback. So viewer Roger writes, Hi, my work requires me to get RHCSA certified. I have no prior experience with Linux other than using Ubuntu for regular home use. So practically I have zero to none experience. I bought a RHCSA RHCE Red Hat Linux certification study guide 7th edition book and a couple of basic Linux books. I have started looking at a few videos on YouTube, but I'm kind of confused on how to move forward with this. What would be the best way to study and prepare for RHCSA? Any tips would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Well, thank you, Roger, for taking the time to, to ask your question. And I think I'm going to answer it by picking apart a couple of things um, in your question that would be applicable, obviously, to you and I think to anyone else that's um, looking to prepare for the RHCSA exam. For those that aren't, aren't familiar with RHCSA, it stands for the Red Hat Certified System Administrator Exam, and it is the, the first in the series of certifications that uh, Red Hat offers for their version of Linux, which is Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So the first thing I want to touch on is the fact that you have bought a Certification Study Guide 7th Edition book. Now, I don't know if this book is referring to its 7th printing or its 7th edition, or if it's referring to the Red Hat Enterprise uh, Linux exams for RHEL 7, but the first tip I have for you is you want to study for whatever is the current exam or the, the current technology. You want to do this for two reasons. First of all, it'll prepare you for whatever new deployments of RHEL or whatever technology it is for, for which you're studying. And secondly, a lot of these exams and the Red Hat Certified System Administrator is one of them will have material on the exam that comes from older exams. And so just because you're certified in RHEL 8 does not mean that if you have to deal with a RHEL 7 system, you're going to be completely lost. There'll be a lot of transfer of skills. But for the exam, since I think it was um, October of last year, so October 2020 is when um, the RHEL 7 version of RHCSA was retired, you always want to prepare for whatever the current exam is. Now, if you're at a time where they're like transitioning to a new exam, perhaps you could consider doing the older exam, but still, even in that situation, I would, I, I would highly encourage you to, to work toward the, the most current exam. So as far as your, your study material that you have, you might need to make sure that it either is for the exam for REL 8 or um, get some supplemental material that, that would cover some of the objectives for uh, REL 8 that aren't there in the REL 7 exam. So the second part I want to focus on is your question of what would be the best way to study and prepare for RHCSA? Well, this, th there is no one single answer to it. It, um, it depends a lot on what your, your learning style is. If you're, if you are a person that can like listen to lectures and take it all in, then, you know, some, video stuff may be helpful. If you're a person that can just read it in a book and then you know it, great. One thing that's special about the RHCSA exam is that it is a hands-on exam. There is no multiple guests answering questions. You will be given a list of objectives and an environment in which to work, and then you have to do those objectives. As far as how, how, how you prepare, even if you're more of an auditory or visual learner or whatnot, you want to actually get your hands dirty and be configuring things. So to get you on your way, what I first suggest that you do is go through all of the RHCSA exam objectives. You, you can get them from Red Hat's website and you want to look at them and ask, could you teach these to someone else? For example, one of the objectives is create, mount, unmount, and use VFAT, EXT4, and XFS file systems. So when you read that objective to yourself, do you feel confident that, that you could teach me or anyone else how to do that? And by definition of teach, I don't mean you've mastered every little nuance about it, but could you show me without having to, to, to use any aids what I would need to do to create a um, XFS volume, make the file system, and mount it somewhere? And if the answer is yes, then you probably know that objective pretty well. If the answer is no, then that, that would be something on, on which that, 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 that you're going to need to focus. And I will do that for all of the ob objectives to 
kind of give you a um, base of, of where you are with your knowledge. And that might mean you know a couple of objectives. That might mean, hey, you actually know a good bit. Or it might mean that you don't know anything about it. But knowing where you stand is a good uh, starting point for you. Now, the next part of that is is preparing for the exam. And if you're in a position where you don't know really anything about any of the objectives, what I suggest that, that you do is then you, you turn to your book or if there's a particular video series that you're watching or you're taking a, a, a course somewhere or a course online, you'll use that as your curriculum to guide you through the objectives to learn what's important about them. And that, that, that goes into the, the next thing of, of, of the how, right? So what you're going to want to do are practice doing these tasks. Since this exam is an, um, a task-based exam, you, you need to know more than just kind of memorizing some commands. You actually need to do the things. So whether you're using your book or videos and such, if you're given some examples, do those examples in your own lab. And by lab, you don't need anything real extravagant but just fire up a VM or so um, and just literally practice doing some of the stuff. That, that That's what I did, especially for some of the storage objectives when I was doing my own preparation that I wasn't prepared for. I would, you know, let, let's say that one of the objectives I was working on was that create mount and unmount objective. I would just do that over and over again until I was familiar enough with it to be able to, to teach it to someone else where then I felt good enough to be able to do it on, on the exam. But again, there's no particular thing I can tell you, you know, do this thing. And if you do this thing, this exact way, you'll be prepared for the exam. That's just, that's, that, that's, that's not how, how it works. We all, all learn a bit differently, but I do think if you follow the path of, first of all, make sure you, that, that, that you're preparing for the right exam and have, um, appropriate materials for that. You give yourself um, self-assessment of where you are with the objectives and do that periodically to see if you're progressing. And then three, practice by doing. So you, you have your examples, make sure that, that, that you configure them, you know how to look up documentation with them. I think that that you'll do well. A couple of videos that I have that I'll, I'll, I'll link in into the description. One is going to be a video that's some um, five tips specifically for the exam itself. You might find that helpful for your, your journey and also my playlist of practice sessions. What these were weren't necessarily me like making a instructional set for, you know, use this a, a, as your sole source for preparing for the exam, but rather it was how I did that self-assessment that I was just talking about to see if I felt confident about the different objectives on the exam. So, so you might find them helpful as well. So again, thank you for, for taking the time to, to, to ask your question, and I hope that, that you found the answer useful, and I hope anyone else that might have a similar question finds the answer useful as well. For everyone, um, don't hesitate to, to leave comments on videos. A as I have time, I will try to address them either just uh, replying to the comment itself or for something like this that I think is, is, is useful for a wider scope. I might make a video and such about it. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure that you do. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you click like and share it with others. Thanks again for taking the time to watch, and I'll see you the next time.